You won't believe it, but many advanced tricks we use in apps like Premiere and After Effects can actually be done in simpler apps like CapCut. Now, don't get me wrong, it's not easy at all. You still need to put in some effort, but once you learn these tricks, your videos will look so professional that most people can't tell if you used CapCut or other pro apps. And if you're wondering, no, I don't edit in CapCut. Not a fan, sorry. But I'll show you step by step how to make edits like these. You better grab your coffee because we have some hard work to do. The first trick I want to show you on CapCut is one I learned from this guy a couple of years ago. I've used this technique at the beginning of this video and another video. Now I'm going to show you how to create it in CapCut. For this, we'll need a background, smoke explosion footage, a flying particle video, and a logo or any object you prefer. First, insert your background and logo into the timeline. Then we need to duplicate the logo to use as a shadow. Next, select the logo and its duplicate, resize both, and center them on the background. Now disable the first layer, go to the adjustments of the second layer, and reduce all the lightness options to the minimum. Now let's just increase the scale of the logo slightly. Go to mask, choose rectangle, and increase the feather to fade the edges. Now enable the first layer, go to adjustments, and increase the vignette. As you can see, increasing the vignette effect sharpens the logo corners. To fix this, go to mask, select rectangle, and increase the round corners option. Now we have a clean 3D logo. Let's animate it. Remember the scale percentage that your logo is set to. Mine is 27. Select your logo and its shadow layer, then move them forward by about four to five frames. Go to the beginning of the logo layer, increase the scale to the maximum, and create your first keyframe. To smoothly stamp our logo against the background, we use the bounce effect. Imagine a heavy anvil hitting the ground, which is slightly elastic. The anvil gets smaller on impact, then the elastic ground pushes it back up, making it appear larger. And finally, the anvil returns to its normal size and becomes stable. So after creating our first keyframe, move forward four to five frames and create a second keyframe, decreasing the scale to 24%. Then move forward one frame and create a third keyframe at 28%. Finally, move forward two more frames, create a fourth keyframe and decrease the scale to 27%. The final result should look like this. So the steps are, very big, smallest, bigger, and finally normal size. Now let's animate the background as well. We should do the opposite for the background. Let me explain. When the logo moves down, we create the illusion that the background moves up, mimicking the effect of an elastic material under pressure. Maybe I should have listened to my mom and become a physics teacher. Nah, I'm good. Anyway, we need to scale up the background slightly and create a keyframe just before the logo hits it. Next, move to the impact point and scale up slightly. Then when the logo gets bigger, scale down. Finally, at the stabilization point, return the scale to the original size set at the first keyframe. And that's what the final result will look like. Time to add the smoke explosion footage between the logo and its shadow layer. Resize it until it looks perfect for your video. Then set the blend mode to screen. Go to the adjustment settings of the layer, increase the contrast and decrease the saturation to minimum. For the final part, add the particle video to the timeline. Change the blend mode to screen. And what, what are you doing here? Are you f Sorry guys, let's move on. If the video turns out black and white, go to adjustment and increase the contrast to the maximum. And instead of using the motion blur option for the layer, use the one in effects. This allows you to set keyframes and make the video smoother. That's it, you've just learned the first trick. Now, let's create my favorite trick. Applying this technique in CapCut was really challenging and after 47 failed attempts, I finally did it. We may need to use a second app like PhotoP to edit our screenshots, and don't worry, it's 100% free. Now open CapCut and import anything you want. For example, I added my logo. Then take your first screenshot. After that, add your footage to the timeline and take another screenshot. Open PhotoP and import your second screenshot. Use the pen tool to cut out the logo from the timeline as well as from the media panel. Then export them separately as PNG files. Back in CapCut, import them all and add them to the timeline. Now. Replace the PNG files in their corresponding places within the screenshot. Now, this part is crucial. Although you can do it in PhotoP, I prefer to stay in CapCut. We're going to create an outer glow for our logo layer. First, duplicate the logo layer, then increase the size of the duplicated layer. Go to Adjustment and decrease the temperature and contrast. Then, increase the brightness, highlights, shadows, and whites to the maximum. Go to Mask, choose Rectangle, and adjust the feather and round corners options until the layer appears as a glowing stroke around the first layer. I'm going to create two keyframes in the Mask section. First, go about one second forward and create the first keyframe. 
Then, go back a little and create the second keyframe while reducing the size of the mask. Now go to Effects and drag Rebound Swing into the timeline. Just two to three frames before the glow appears, create a keyframe on the effect and decrease all the effect settings to the minimum. Then move two to three frames forward after the glow appears. Create another keyframe, increase the size of the effect to around 10 and increase the speed to around 30. Five seconds after your second keyframe, create another keyframe and keep the effect settings the same. Then move one second forward and create another keyframe, increasing the size slightly and setting the speed to the maximum. Hold command and select the effect, the glow and the logo layer. Then create a compound clip. It should be something like this. Now let's animate our layer just like I did in After Effects. Now grab the playhead and move it forward one, two seconds after the logo starts shaking, then create your first keyframe on the scale. Move forward four frames, scale up the layer, position it where you want it to be, and create the second keyframe. Now, after the logo starts shaking hard, create another keyframe and keep the scale setting the same. Then move forward about four to five frames, scale down to the minimum, and position the layer where you want it to land and disappear. And finally, enable the layer's motion blur to make the movement smoother. Time to animate the timeline image. Go to four to five frames before the logo hits the timeline. Turn off the uniform scale, increase the scale width by 2%, and create a scale keyframe. Then, at the same point, go to the adjustments and set the temperature and contrast to minimum while increasing the brightness, highlights, and shadows to maximum. Now, at the point where the logo hits, create a new keyframe and scale down the width by 4%. Just one frame later, set the width and height to be the same and create your final keyframe. At the same point, go to Adjustments and reset all settings to default. Then right-click on the layer and create a compound clip. Move the playhead to just before the logo hits. Go to Blend Mode and set the opacity to minimum. Two frames later, create another keyframe and set the opacity to maximum. That's it! I also added blur to the background to enhance the effect. It's optional, but definitely worth trying. Maybe I should have a chat with my mom about my job. Hmm, nope, bad idea.